and that commander has a scarf on to stay warm as we go skiing with today's game alpine skiing for your odyssey 2 let's go ahead and take alpine skiing let's pop it in my odyssey 2 and see how it holds up today let's go to the game Alpine Skiing was published by Magnavox and carries the copyright year of 1979. It was programmed by Odyssey 2 super programmer Ed Everett, who was responsible for about half of the system's library, including the great Pickaxe Pete, which I reviewed in episode 594. I'll try to remember to put a link to that review in the description below. The back of the box says the following, Alpine Skiing! This authentic electronic simulation of world-class championship skiing is so realistic you can hear your skis cut through the powder as you traverse the slopes. It's all here, the slalom, the giant slalom, and the soaring downhill races. It's you against the other skiers and a computerized timer that clocks you to the tenth of a second. The excitement is endless and the computer generates over 195,000 different runs. Alpine skiing is a skiing game for one or two players, I think, as the box makes no mention of the number of players and the game feels like a two player only game, but the manual does mention possibly using a single controller only, so I guess a single player can run the courses for the best time. For the controls, you use the joystick to steer and hold the button down to go a little bit faster. There are three courses to choose from, slalom, giant slalom, and downhill. The manual says that each course has 55 gates to ski through. In downhill, all the gates are horizontally lined up, but in slalom and giant slalom, some gates are vertical. When skiing through vertical gates, it doesn't matter which side you approach them from. The difference between slalom and giant slalom is that the giant version is longer with the gates spaced farther apart. The three courses rotate on the bottom of the screen at the beginning. Beginning. When your desired course shows up, you press down on the joystick to choose it. The computer keeps track of the time unless you miss a gate, at which point it will keep track of the number of gates you miss. In a two-player game, the fastest time wins unless both players miss a gate. In that case, the player with the fewest misses wins. When both players finish the race, you can press down on the joystick to restart the same type of course or reset the system to start over. Apparently, the computer randomizes the course every single time you play it. The graphics and sounds are pretty basic, although the skier does have a couple of nice animations. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today. Currently at PriceTrying.com, the game has a value of $3 loose, $10 complete, and $15 new. So what do I think of Alpine Skiing? I'm not a big fan. I don't like that if you miss a gate, it stops keeping track of your time. I wish it simply added an extra second or two every time you missed a gate instead. And I don't like how if you let go of the joystick, your skier will always veer to the left or the right instead of going straight down. This meant I had to constantly hold down to avoid drifting, and that wasn't that comfortable. These reasons also limits its appeal as a two-player game. But at least in a two-player game, once you get frustrated with it, you can simply invade the other person course for a little bit of fun. Overall, I got used to it enough that I could play it again, but I really don't want to. So I'm going to rank Alpine Skiing. Well, I do think it's a little bit better than Thunderball at 13, but I would rather play Popeye at 12. So out of the 20 games that now rank for the Odyssey 2, Alpine Skiing is hitting the slopes at the 13th position. Alpine Skiing is one of the weaker skiing games out there, but that's just my opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter and click the bell so you don't miss any future videos. At this time, I'd like to thank Michael M for his generous support on Patreon. If you think these videos give you at least a dollar's worth per month of information and entertainment, please consider joining my supporters at patreon.com slash gamer. Not only will you help keep the show going, but you'll also gain access to some exclusive content. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and don't miss a single gate. Uh-huh. <laughs>